Hey guys, thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Terry Holland. I'm a trainer of NLP, hypnotherapy, timeline therapy, and a master NLP coach. So today we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about bullying in business, perception is projection, and some big lessons that I've learned about these concepts um, fairly recently, like today. So just give me one moment. Hey, Joni, thanks for coming in. Um, as I'm just waiting for a few people to sign in, I'm just going to share this. So hang on, hang tight, and um, and then we'll we'll start. Hey, Jocelyn, thanks for joining us. Um, just hang tight, guys. I'm just gonna as soon as this pops up in my feed, so I can share it. Then we will we'll get started with the content. Um, we're talking about some big topics today. It's been a it's been an interesting couple of days for me, some big learnings. And learnings, I think, are always good, aren't they? There's always something to learn. Ah, there I am. Now I can see me. Share. Share to my page. Okay. Done. That is done. Okay. So, yeah, so we have some stuff to talk about today. Um, for those of you who might have noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I posted something earlier today about bullying. So I've been dealing, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the situation because there's no, um, no, there's no point in doing that and getting into specifics of what's going on or who did what or naming people because I'm not about that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to redo something that has been really valuable to me. So this whole situation started about almost a year ago. A year ago there was a, an incident with some local business owners and that has led to continuous slander and attacks on my character for well almost a year now um, and it's completely unfounded it's completely well it's just bullying so here's what I've learned about bullying hey Nikki hi Virgie here's what I've learned about bullying you know when we were kids bullying was like I don't know, someone would call you names on the schoolyard or pick on you. And it was face to face and it was hurtful and it was mean and it was awful, but that's what a bully looked like. So in this situation, it's been totally different. It's comments on Facebook and oh man, like <laughs> guys, it's, this is hard for me to even talk about right now because it's still so fresh, but it's been, um, yeah, just nasty comments. So, you know, the kind of comments that are like, they don't name you. My name's never been used, but things are specific enough to me and my business that it's about me. And those who know, know that it is. And so even though I've blocked these people from my Facebook and I've blocked them out of my life and I've cut them out of my social circle, I still see it. I see it through friends sharing with me screenshots because they know that it's about me and saying, hey, you should know this person is now saying this about you. And by the way, I know this is totally vague right now, so bear with me because I'm going to get to the important stuff, um, but just bear with me. So this is what bullying looks like in the adult business world. It's nasty comments shared that imply things about you, imply things about your business. And the thing to me is, if this is what these people are saying publicly, then what have they been saying privately? And all the private stuff that they've been saying to other people has gotten back to me and affected my business. Um, not a huge impact on my business, but it's had an effect on my business. And it's really crappy. It's really shitty. I'm just going to say what it is. I'm going to call it what it is. It's bullshit. So this has been going on for, it'll be a year next month. It'll be a year in May. And it's one of those things that like, I like to everything from an NLP perspective. And in NLP, we talk about perception is projection. So what is perception is projection? Well, that means that, here, I'll give you a little NLP lesson. How about that? And then I'm going to read you from this book a little bit. So, and feel free to jump in, guys. If you have any comments or anything you want to say, jump in, share. This is a conversation. So... In NLP, we talk about perception as projection. So what that means is you have 11 million bits of information coming to you every second of every day. 
And your mind can only process 126 of them. So you can't know what's really going on, right? You can't, you can't take everything in. So you take in your 126 bits and you determine what are the 126 through what we call filters. So you filter information through, through your filters of belief systems, values, language, space, time, memories, meta programs. You have all these different filters that filter this information. And from all that, we create an internal representation of whatever's happening in the world. And that's what we react to. So whatever you're responding to in your life, whatever's going on in your life is actually a reflection of you because you can only see what's going on inside of you. So I know these are some big concepts and this is a big, it's a big idea. Okay. And I'm going to chunk it down for you a bit too. So um, I'm just going to read off of my screen for a moment. So if I'm looking away from you, don't think I'm being rude. Um, but I just want to get this quote. So Carl Jung said, we tend, what we tend to do is we marry our unconscious mind and then project onto her all of our unresolved stuff. So that's what we do. Our most deeply unconscious stuff, we project it onto other people. And, and what's the purpose of that? Why do we do that? We do that so that we can resolve it and heal what's broken or what's hurting or unintended to in us. So we take our really deeply unconscious stuff and we bring it to the surface by projecting it on someone else. So that means that, okay, here, um, it's a big concept, so just bear with me. So it means that if there's a problem in your life, you have a part in creating it. If someone's behavior, if you don't like someone's behavior in your world, they're a projection. So it's easy to say, um, you know, that person's me and that person's me and that person's me. And we pick out the people who we, we like their behavior and we go, oh yeah, I see myself in that person and that person, and that person. But then there's that person, you know, that person, that asshole who we don't want to be like. And we go, I am not that. That is not me. Well, that's the person that you're most like. And this is what, this is what I've been having to face. Now, let's be really clear on one thing. It doesn't mean you're responsible for their behavior. It means that they're your projection. If you have a negative emotional reaction to it, that's you. That's your projection. It doesn't mean that you're responsible or you're at fault for what they're doing. The moment that you get the learnings, here's how we turn those projections off, is that you get the learning from it. So once you get the learnings that you need and you heal whatever inside of you needs the healing, they become a non-issue. It's not a problem anymore. You just don't care. So going back to this bullying situation is I've been dealing with this particular bully. And there's actually three of them, but it's the, the main ones, the problem. The other two are just kind of like, I don't know, like um, followers. Let's just call them followers. They follow along. They do what this person does. So I've been dealing with this for almost a year now and asking myself, because I know perception is projection and I know that I create my world and I know that I create the problems that are in my world and going, what is the learning? What do I need to learn here? What inside of me do I need to work on to make this stop being a problem? And every time that I have thought over the past year that I got the learnings that I got what I needed and I can just let it go, this person, this little group of people would do something else. Something else would come up. I would get another nasty email. I would see something posted about me on Facebook. Either it would be slander against my business or they'd be slandering my podcast or I'd hear a rumor come up from someone in the local business community that this person said this about you or one of my clients would tell me that this person was trying to convince them to stop working with me and hire them instead and this, it, it would come up over and over again and I'd keep feeling this reaction and then about, I don't know, a month, two months ago now, I thought it had all come to a head and it was done. And that was really just the beginning of the boiling point. And it got worse and it got worse. And it was like a festering infection, um, like a boil. That's what comes to mind for me. It's like a boil coming to the surface and it needs to be lanced. And just when I thought that it was like, 
out there, done, over, it started to fester and get worse and worse until the whole thing had to erupt. And that happened today. I broke, I hit my breaking point. I thought I'd hit my breaking point. Have you ever been like that where, hey, Georgiana, have you ever been that way where you, you think you've hit your breaking point with something? You're in a situation and you think, I'm done, this is it. And then it gets worse and you realize that it's not done. That wasn't it. That's what's been going on with me. So I kept thinking, I got the learnings, I'm good, this problem is solved. This person is just going to go on with their life and leave me alone. And then it would get worse again. And then today, there was an incident last night. And again, I'm not getting into specifics because I don't, I'm not going to stoop to their level by sharing specific things. But it hit a boiling point and things ruptured. So this morning I woke up and there was, I felt this heaviness of, I can't, I just can't do it anymore. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done with all of it. And so I decided to myself just confront the bully and hey, Sandy. So I messaged this person and I made it very clear, clearer than I have ever made it to stop. I made sure it was known that I see all the public posts. I see all the stuff on Facebook, even though these people are blocked, it gets back to me. Um, And yeah, I just called him out on all of it and said, well, no, in certain terms, F off. Um, so that happened and you know what? It felt really good. It felt really good to finally just confront it head on and say enough, enough. So I'm going to read to you. I want to read this passage to you. It's from a book called thick face, black heart, which if you're in business, I totally recommend it. I definitely recommend this book. My coach recommended it to me and I'm so grateful that I've read it. And I go back to this page, which is about it's, search for your own inner conviction. And I posted this on my Facebook earlier because this is what, um, this passage is what inspired me to finally take action today and do something about it. So I'm just going to read to you this little section of it. I'm not going to read to you a ton, so don't worry. Um, but here it is. Many of us were taught that when someone slaps you, you should turn the other cheek. This is not always the best course of action. There is a time to submit to being slapped, and there is a time to hit back twice as hard, so you will not be slapped again. If someone slaps your face, you might turn the other cheek for one of several reasons. Perhaps you have chosen the path of submission with a full understanding of what that means. It might be that even though you feel the impulse to strike back, you suppress your anger because you have been taught that violence is wrong. Or it might be that you're afraid to further provoke your antagonist. If you turn the other cheek out of an inner conviction, so be it. If you have to suppress an impulse to strike back, it means that you have not truly accepted the truth of turning the other cheek, but have allowed your actions to be constrained by the standards of others. This in turn perpetuates the role of the victim for yourself. If you turn the other cheek because you are afraid to hit back, It does not mean you are morally superior. It simply means you are a coward. The thick faced black heart practitioner understands that hitting back does not necessarily make you a bad person. It might well be that in punishing violent behavior, you are acting as a peacemaker. The truth is that most of the commonly accepted standards of behavior are arbitrary. And the arbitrators themselves are often flawed individuals who under guise of virtue, have perpetuated their own weakness and fear. So that's what I, I reread that earlier. That passage, the first time I read it, really struck me. Um, and I reread it today. And I realized that what's been going on with me and why I was feeling this heaviness today is that in I've been quiet about this whole situation. And I've been watching. Oh, Angela, thank, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're getting this then. Um, I've been watching these bullies, this little trio of people, spread their lies and spread their viciousness and spread all their malice. And other than, you know, aside from talking to some close friends in my world and sharing with my close friends, my coach and my husband, I've been keeping a really, I've been keeping it really tight. And that's been violating my boundaries. And that's been violating my values of what I believe is right. 
because I don't believe that bullies should get away with their behavior. I don't believe that people should be able to get away with doing that stuff and not suffer the consequences of that behavior. And I don't believe that a victim, and I mean victim in the sense of like their actions, not that I accept a victimhood as my mindset, um, but it's, yeah, for me it was, I, I don't think people should have to be quiet when they're being bullied, when they're being attacked, when they're being, when this is going on. Um, Jocelyn, so how did, how did it entail? Have they replied? Is it over now? You know, I don't know. He replied, um, refused to take any responsibility. And it, it, I had the last word in the conversation and said, like, no more passive aggressive bullshit. Stop it. Stop the post. Stop the gossip. Stop what you're doing. Move on with your life. Just move on. Go away. And haven't heard a response since. So I hope that's the end of it. We'll see. We'll see if it is. Um, but out of this, here's where I want to get to the learnings part, the big learning I got. And for those of you who are watching earlier, I mentioned that through all of this, I've been looking for what are the learnings? What can I, what do I need to learn so that I stop responding? I stopped reacting. I stopped having an emotional reaction to it because it's only a projection. It's only has power over you if it stirs an emotional reaction in you. And I couldn't turn that off because I wasn't getting the learnings that I needed yet. So reading this passage in the book and responding the way I did, where I just fought back to the bully, hey, Cindy, I'm glad that you jumped on, um, where I just responded back and dealt with it, then I, here's where the learnings came in. So I did, I'm a timeline therapy trainer. I work heavily with timeline therapy. And timeline therapy uses how we store time in the mind. Um, I can explain that later how that actually works, but because that's not important right now. What is important is that what I did, and for those of you who have worked with me, you'll understand what I mean, is I floated up above my timeline and I looked down on the situation from a completely dissociated view. So I was floating above the situation, looking down on it in my mind and asked my unconscious mind, what do I have to learn here? What do I have to learn? Because this has to be resolved today. And what I saw, and I saw it very clearly for the first time in this situation, that this little group of people, these three people, and the one leader of the group, and the three, um, yes, I will share the book, you bet, um, that this little group, all of a sudden I saw them as like, you know, a, a bunch of ants living in an anthill. They're just behaving like ants. They're doing what ants do. And now I don't want them in my house, right? I don't want ants in my house, but the ones that live out on my lawn, they're not an issue. They're just doing what they do. So, yeah, and I could just, from that vantage point, the dissociated position, I could see them so clearly that they're just ants. I could see that this person, because I've been worried about how this is affecting my life, how it's affecting my business, the gossip, the rumors, all the false lies they're spreading, and what I, re what I saw from that vantage point is their circle of influence is very small. It's very limited. And I could also see that I have a great circle of influence and I have a huge network and a huge support system and an amazing group of people in my life. And they're just a few ants on the outside being a little annoying out in the garden. Does that make sense? So they're just doing what ants do. It's just their behavior. They're behaving the way I expect an ant to behave. And that's it. That's it. There's no, there's no power to it. There's no, they can't influence me. And what I have been doing up until this point is I was letting it steal focus from my mind. I was letting it affect my state because I was reacting to it. And then I finally got it. I finally got it that I can't fault them their behavior, they're just doing what they do. That's it. That's it. And in that moment, the projection turned off and I stopped caring about it. So they can spread their lies, they can spread their gossip, they can do what they do because that's just what they do. And the people who will listen to them, who will buy into the stories and the lies and the rumors and all the garbage that they're spreading, they're not people I would ever want as clients, for one. 
They're not people I would ever want as friends. They're not people who are ever going to be a part of my life because they're not my people. My people are the ones who showed up on my Facebook when I shared this passage earlier and gave me support. My people are the friends who I've been talking to about this issue who have shown me like unlimited love and support on it. So it's not an issue. That was the big learning I got. The other learning, that was the first one, there's actually two. The other one is something that my coach said to me when all of this began, and I didn't get it. Like I got it on a superficial level, and today it sunk in and came home, was this is training. My coach said to me when this whole thing began, he said, you're in training. He knows my ambition to life and how big I want my career to get and the big stages I want to be on and the mass influence that I want to have in the world and the change I want to affect. And he said, this is training because if you can't handle it at this level, at this level with these people spreading their gossip and their rumors and their lies and posting their shit on Facebook, if you can't deal with it at this level, you won't be able to deal with it at this level. And he said to me then, he said, do you think that Tony Robbins doesn't have haters? And think about how many people probably post about him on a daily basis or send him hate mail and messages and like absolutely hate him for no reason other than he's doing what he's doing. And he can't get up in the morning and think about those people because he has to think about the ones that he's helping and he's going to change. And so what my coach Jeff said was, this is training to take you to that level because you have to be able to deal with it here until you just don't care and then then you can rise higher because then I'll be prepared to deal with it at that higher level so I got it today I got it it's just training they're just a bunch of ants doing what ants do being a nuisance and they don't have to be in my world they don't have to be in my life um, Jocelyn there's a French expression that says talk about it in good or in bad as long as you talk about it which means that at least they talk about you, which is good. It means that you're important. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that because at least, yeah, I'm important. And and I also look at it as this the, one of the people keeps saying that I've somehow betrayed him. He won't say how, but somehow I've betrayed him in his life. Um, and he's fine spreading that on Facebook that I somehow betrayed him. We'll never say, not even to me, we'll never say how or why or how specifically that happened. And yeah, and my response to him was, if I can make you feel a certain way, then you've given me too much power in your life. And that's the same that I'm learning, right, with this, is I've given them too much power. Because at the end of the day, you are in charge of your mind and therefore your results, and I'm in charge of my mind and therefore my results. And I'm in charge of my state and you're in charge of your state. So if, if you're not happy, change something, right? So what I was doing up until now was I was letting them affect me. I was letting them in. I was letting them into my mind. I was letting them affect me. But they can't make me feel hurt, just like I can't make him feel betrayed. You can't make another person feel anything without their willing acceptance, just like they cannot make you feel anything. So kind of a cool experience, really. And I look for, I like to look for gifts and things. And the gift in this is that it really took all of my trainings over the last few years and brought them home in the most real way. Because I've experienced, um, and those of you who watch my videos, you know that I've experienced the power of timeline therapy. And I've experienced the power of NLP in so many ways in my life. And this was like the lesson of lessons, the big learning to drive home perception is projection in such a way that I like, I get it. I feel like I get it deep in my cells now that I get it. And yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna read some comments here. Um, Jocelyn, I'm sad to hear that you had to carry this on your shoulders for almost a year now. Yeah, but you know what? Like I get now that it's, it's just, it's training. Like, like Jeff said, it's just training. And, and I feel like it's done now. I felt like this huge weight has been lifted off of me. I feel lighter. I feel clearer again. 
Guys, I didn't eat anything today until about four o'clock because I was so, um, I don't know, my body was so busy processing all of this on a neurological level. That's what it felt like, that my neurology was rewiring around these new learnings and beliefs that it felt like my body just wanted to fast for a while and not eat and just be really quiet. And um, yeah, I spent pretty much most of the day in trance and in contemplation and introspection. And I had a lot of work to do today and none of it got done. So I'm going to be, um, after this, I'm going to be hopping on my computer and getting some work done. But it's what had to happen. It's that, like I mentioned earlier, it was like a boil that needed to come to the surface and it needed to rupture. And it ruptured. And it wasn't the end of the world. And I got some amazing, amazing learning from it. So if any of you guys are experiencing this and experiencing like a bully in your life or that kind of hatred coming at you, um, I would really challenge you to look at the idea of perception is projection. Again, it doesn't put you at fault for their behavior, but your reaction to the behavior. And when you can disconnect from that, then they're, they're just, they're just ants. They're just annoying little ants doing what ants do. So that's, that was it. That's it. Oh, the necklace. Thank you. I've been getting a lot of compliments on this. I'll just hold it up so you guys can see. It's a bull. Um, tell you a little bit about this. This is a color by Amber piece. I got it. I got it from my friend Keely who sells color by Amber and they have all kinds of really cool pieces for women. And I love that this company supports women all over the world. Women make the products, women sell the products and, um, and they have, they produce zero waste. So very cool product. And for those of you who are wondering more about the book, um, I'll show you again. So it's thick face, black heart by Chin Ning Chu. And I don't know if you can read it on there, if it's backwards, so I'm just going to read it. It's the warrior philosophy for conquering the challenges of business and life. And it really, I think it's really important, especially for women to read. And I'm not saying that in any sort of sexist way, but a lot of us, especially like, you know, I think it's different for the younger generations now coming up. Um, but for a lot of us, we were taught to be nice, to be polite and to basically, yeah, just be nice, be polite. Don't talk back. Don't speak up. And this book teaches that in business, you need to be able to do that. And the, the thick face idea is don't let them see your reaction. Don't let them get inside. Don't let them infiltrate you. Um, and black heart is the same. Don't let them into your heart. Don't let them emotionally affect you. Um, powerful book, very powerful book, full of a ton of great information. So if there's anything else, any other questions, anything else that you guys want to share or contribute, then please do. Otherwise, I'm going to sign off and call it a day. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was beneficial. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me and putting up with my long rambling at times talk tonight. And I hope that you learned something from it. And if nothing else, maybe you learned a little bit about NLP through perception is projection. And if you are ever interested in knowing more about that, um, I'd be happy to talk with you about it. Oh, I love you too, Jocelyn. You're awesome too. And you're welcome, Erin. Thanks so much, guys. And if you have any comments to add, then I will, as always, I'll check the comments and respond. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great night. Bye.